First up, we have a presentation from Innovic Limited, ASX code IIQ. Innovic has a market cap of approximately $50 million. Uh, Innovic Limited is, is developing and commercializing a portfolio of diagnostic and exosome-based products for the early detection, diagnosis, prognosis, and monitoring of cancer and other diseases. Our presenter today is Chief Executive Officer, Leanne Hinch. Leanne, welcome back and please take it away. Thank you, Manny. If we can move on to slide three, that would be great. So hello everybody, uh, Innovic is a biotechnology company developing next generation diagnostics and therapeutics. We're doing that through the power of exosomes that enable earlier detection and treatment of cancer. We have disruptive technologies that are patented, including an exosome platform and our sub B2M technology that underpins our pipeline. We've got products in market generating revenue. We have a deep pipeline of products across what we call research tools, diagnostics and therapeutics for cancer. And we've got some excellent clinical data uh, showing the our results for early detection of uh, breast and ovarian cancers, as well as supporting our exosome isolation tools. We're commercialising these technologies through partners uh, for sales of Exonet and also of our uh, ultimately to commercialise our exosome diagnostics around the world. As mentioned, our market cap is around 55 million. The company has about 6 million cash at bank and we utilise that cash on advancing our, our uh, programs for our exosome isolation tools and our sub B2M diagnostics. If we can move on to the next slide. So our leadership team uh, is comes from a strong biotechnology and healthcare background. Uh, we recently appointed David Williams as our chairman, um, who is well known as the chairman of Polynovo and formerly of medical developments and runs the firm Kitter Williams. Uh, I'm the CEO, as mentioned, and we have a very experienced chief scientific officer uh, who's come from a background of, of cancer, cancer diagnostics, diagnostics uh, development of biomarkers and, and what is called multivariate algorithms, which is using AI to develop better cancer diagnostics. If we can move on. So our business model is focused on using our core exosome and sub B2M technologies across a number of different business segments. They include research tools where we have an exosome isolation product called Exonet on market and generating revenue. That revenue can be reinvested into our diagnostics pipeline and our high value therapeutics pipeline, which I'll talk about in some more detail in the coming slides. Next slide. The pipeline we have is quite broad for a, an early stage company. Um, they include our exosome research tools, um, which I'll talk about our Exonet technology today. Uh, also sub B2M diagnostics and exosome diagnostics, and I'll speak, speak about them. And then as I said, our exosome therapeutics pipeline. If we can jump to the next slide, please. So what are exosomes? Key focus for the company, exosomes are small vesicles that are released by all cells in the body. They're really important in intracellular communication, regulating the immune system, and can actually uh, have an, an effect in progressing disease. And that's how we utilise exosomes, both from a diagnostic and a treatment perspective. So inside exosomes, this picture on the left there, inside exosomes, they actually contain a whole range of biomolecules such as DNA, RNA and proteins that come from the parent cell. We can use those as biomarkers to diagnose disease um, and they enable earlier disease detection, but they also can be used for therapeutic selection and monitoring, which makes them a very exciting um, uh, source of biomarkers for diagnostics. Additionally, exosomes can be loaded with drugs. So where those biomarkers sit inside the uh, lipid bilayer, we can actually load drugs into exosomes and, and essentially those drugs are protected by that lipid layer. We can also put engineer these exosomes by putting a, 
um, an antigen on the surface of the exosome that can, can then be used to target cancer cells as an example. Both diagnostic companies and pharmaceutical companies have invested a lot of money in exosomes for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes for cancer, neurodegenerative and other diseases. And Innovix's platform is actually uh, utilising exosomes across a number of areas, including to, we have a tool for isolating exosomes as well as developing diagnostics and therapeutics. If we can move on. So our Exonet product is, has been developed to capture exosomes from the blood. Essentially, we can use it to pull out all different types of exosomes, which is why we call it a pan-exosome capture tool. Um, it, it is then used for discovering biomarkers, which were those molecules I showed you earlier inside exosomes, that are used for developing diagnostics for cancer and other diseases. Our technology has speed, efficiency, and scalability advantages over our competitor technologies. Importantly, it can be used at high throughput in clinical laboratories, which means you can take a diagnostic from the bench, which means when you're developing it, all the way through to a clinic and use that in, uh, to run hundreds of thousands of tests per year. Importantly, we have data published validating the use of our technology across a range of different cancers, as well as different inflammatory diseases and neurodegenerative disease. Our technology can be customised and we have a couple of tools that are in development, one called NeuroNet that can be used to isolate brain-derived exosomes. We're very excited about this new product. Essentially, we can use it for developing a diagnostic for early detection of Alzheimer's disease. If we can pop on to the next slide. So the way these technologies, our exosome capture technology is used, is academics can use the technology for uh, discovering biomarker. Pharmaceutical companies can use it for drug discovery and also for development of diagnostics um, for monitoring treatment, uh, both for, sorry, both for treatment selection and also for monitoring uh, treatment response. We have a number of commercial partnerships to drive revenue from this technology. We're currently selling the product direct ourselves, but we have a co-marketing agreement with a global company called Promega, which has headquartered in the United States to uh, promote our products together with theirs throughout the globe. Um, effectively, this um, what happens is exosome, our Exonet technology is used to capture exosomes First, and then Promega uses its technology for uh, extracting nucleic acids, which is the RNA and DNA, outside of those exosomes, such that they can be used for biomarker discovery and diagnostics development. We expect as this relationship progresses, um, that Promega will be a major driver of future revenues for our Exonet technology. Additionally, we have a partnership with a company called Research DX, which uh, provides contract research or uh, services to various pharmaceutical companies that are developing companion diagnostics, uh, and they can utilise our Exonet to work with those pharmaceutical companies in the United States. And the other way we earn revenue from Exonet is we actually provide contract research services where we earn a fee for the services we provide to pharmaceutical and biotech companies or, or even academic labs. Um, that are looking to evaluate Exonet to develop an exosome diagnostic. Um, and we announced our first um, fee-for-service agreement in December 23, and we hope to be able to talk more about that in the future. Next slide. So our lead exosome diagnostic, uh, we are collaborating with a company, uh, sorry, a group called the University of Queensland um, to develop an ovarian cancer screening test um, what this does, it detects ovarian cancer in the early stages, such as stage one and two ovarian cancer um, in high risk women. Now, that's important because currently there's no tests available to de detect ovarian cancer early. And this test so far has shown over 90% accuracy for detecting stage one and two ovarian cancer. It's a multi-marker test, so meaning we detect a number of different biomarkers from outside of exosomes. We combine those in an algorithm uh, using an AI essentially um, to develop earlier detection tests. 
This test um, is currently uh, moving into what's called biomarker validation. And we expect ultimately that this test would move towards uh, an application in the US in 2026 to do clinical studies with ultimately approval in 2029. If we can move on to the next slide. We're very excited about our new exosome therapeutics program where we're developing weaponized exosomes that have been engineered to target and kill cancer. The way this works is we effectively engineer other cells and those cells are usually immune cells such as a CAR T or a CAR NK cell. Those immune cells then release exosomes that contain the same properties as the parent cell. Uh, the engineered target ensures that the exosomes find their way to breast cancer cells in order to kill them. And what we've shown to date is our technology can kill 75% of breast cancer cells in the lab. So that's some very exciting results, and we expect to be able to report further results on this as we advance these studies, uh, including in vitro data and followed by in vivo data in uh, this calendar year and the following calendar year. If we can move on to the next slide. In terms of our other technology, which is called sub-B2M, this technology is used for... Um, improving cancer biomarker tests that are used for monitoring breast and ovarian cancer. We have two programs. Our lead program is our breast cancer program. Breast cancer is the number one cancer in women. There's over 2.3 million cases per year. The way that breast cancer is currently monitored, monitored is using imaging and a test called CA153. That test isn't particularly effective for uh, picking up over, sorry, breast cancer, and what we're doing is, is our test improves the detection um, of breast cancer to improve by sensitivity and specificity of disease. If we can pop onto the next slide, this, this slide shows our clinical validation data uh, where we have shown that our breast cancer test can detect all stages of breast cancer as well as the key breast cancer types, which are invasive ductal and lobular breast cancers. Um, we conducted this study compared to the, one of the leading CA153 tests that's on market uh, by Roche, and we showed that our tests could detect breast cancers with 82% sensitivity, and the specificity of the test was very high, being 93%. What that means is we get less than 7% false positives in people that don't have cancer. And you can see that significantly outperformed the Roche test. We followed this up with a monitoring study. The monitoring study showed that we could detect also all different types of breast cancer subtypes and that we were equivalent to the Roche test for breast cancer monitoring, which is important when we look at going for a registration for that test in the future. So effectively, we concluded that this test is effective for breast cancer monitoring, and we are now seeking to commercialise that test with laboratory partners. If we can move that next slide, please. So our focus is on, as I said, commercialising this test. We expect the breast cancer test to uh, be be in market in the first half of calendar year 25, and also our ovarian cancer test based on the same technology for monitoring ovarian cancer. We expect that to be in market a year later in the first half of 2026. Uh, we've done a number of different uh, presentations around this technology. We expect to provide a new publication on our CA153 results in the near future, and then we will be presenting those at conference presentations and working with key opinion leaders to get the word out there on this exciting new technology. If we can move on to the next slide. So... In summary, our technology, our, where we're at today is we are focused on our proprietary exosome platform that's got applications across research, diagnostics and therapeutics. We have commercial partners secured for Exonate to drive future revenues. We're also earning fees from providing services to pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies, which may lead to future diagnostics development um, collaborations with those companies. And we are very focused on advancing our clinically validated sub-B2M breast cancer tests towards commercialising that as a laboratory-developed test. 
and we have a rich pipeline of research tools, diagnostics and therapeutics for cancer. And if we can move to the last slide, the company is now ex well positioned for growth. We've got some exciting uh, milestones coming up in calendar year 24. On the exosome side, we expect to uh, provide ongoing uh, details on the commercial sales of our Exonet product, um, which we see to be a uh, exciting revenue generator for the company that we will obviously reinvest in our diagnostics and therapeutics pipeline. Um, we expect to collaborate with various uh, pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies on exosome diagnostics and to be able to provide data on some of our pipeline products, Neuronet and our exosome ovarian cancer test during the year. And importantly, we already announced our sub B2M breast cancer monitoring data. And one of the key focuses on the sub B2M program is to secure a commercialization partner. So thank you very much. And I'll hand back to Manny for questions. Leon. Thank you for that. Fantastic. Uh, we've got quite a few questions that have come in. Uh, <laughs> so I'll have to, I don't think we're going to get to all of them, but I'll ask, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pick a few and the others uh, will pass on those questions to Leanne and uh, she may be able to uh, answer those offline. So uh, why don't we start with, uh, there is a question asking whether uh, or when we will see the ovarian cancer trial results that were due out in Q1. Sure, we're we're a few days overdue on that um, on that. So the ovarian cancer uh, analytical validation study, we certainly will expect to report those results very soon. So uh, watch this space. Okay. Um, next question: Is uh, Innovic planning to manufacture the M products, or is it more of a licensing model? Yeah, so our excellent exosome capture tool, we do manufacture that product in house. Um, so we have uh, significant capacity to meet market needs for that probably over the next few years. Uh, we may end up uh, working with a contract manufacturing as that market grows. However, with diagnostics, those products are manufactured by a contract manufacturer. Um, that is not what we do as a company. Uh, and commercialization is definitely with a partner. Okay, great. Um, next question, uh, is there any approved exosome drug for cancer on the market now? And can you discuss any potential advantages uh, or limitations over a um, CART therapies for cancer? Yeah, sure. That's a very good question. Um, so there's no exosome therapeutics on market. There's many in development by multiple companies around the world. A lot of the focus is around cancer, but also neurodegenerative diseases and also treatment of rare diseases. Our focus uh, is on cancer. And uh, the question that was asked around what are, the, what are the benefits of an exosome therapeutic over a CAR-T or a CAR-NK, um, essentially, these cell therapies are clearly an exciting growth area. Um, Fantastic therapies, uh, a number of billion dollar products out there in development. Um, most of these therapies are auto autologous therapies, um, meaning that they can't be provided off the shelf. You have to take cells from a patient and give those cells back to the patient. The beauty of an exosome therapeutic is we can develop an off the shelf product. We don't have to worry about any immune rejection of those cells and our, our products can be provided to all patients. They have manufacturing benefits around cost of goods, um, and ultimately we expect to see both safety and potentially efficacy benefits in solid tumours. So that's the, why we are focused on exosome therapeutics. Okay, great. Um, next question, and we, you know, we, we are, uh, we'll probably have to limit it to, uh, to three. Um, how does the breast cancer testing um, that you are working on compare to mammography? Mm -hmm. So effectively, uh, mammography is used for screening ovarian cancer. Um, we, are, we are developing a test for monitoring ovarian cancer. So the difference is screening is before people are diagnosed. So we're looking to pick up disease in people that are otherwise healthy. Once the person's been diagnosed with, with breast cancer, they need to be followed, treated basically, and then they need to be regularly monitored, one, to see if the treatment is effective, and two, to see if the if cancer comes back. 
we're developing a test for that purpose. Problem is you can't use imaging, let's say four times a year. Um, you can't do that with imaging because you've got potential issues with radiation. The other thing is if a woman has had a double mastectomy, then you can't have mammography. You would have to have a PET scan, for example. That's expensive, time consuming. It takes a day out of the patient's life to go to a clinic and get scanned. Um, using our test, it's a simple blood test. They can get it ran by their doctor and essentially you can do that as many times as necessary. So if, uh, if a clinician needs to monitor their patient regularly and they might want to do that every couple of months or every three months, then that can be done using our test.